we're camped out with Lamb Chop here at the Hot Rod Reunion in Bowling Green. And it's it's not just a, a you know a leisure trip. This is like a research thing because Lamb Chop is actually building a gasser. Old Tanglefoot. Old Tanglefoot. Tell us about Old Tanglefoot real quick. It's just a 63 SS Nova, a little Chevy 2. Gonna have a 400 small block in it. Hopefully a four speed. Maybe an automatic, I don't know. Or a blower. Or a blower. Oh, it's got to have a blower. Right. Got to. But this is like Mecca for gassers here. Oh, yeah. You know? This is the so, weekend. Yeah. I mean, you're not just here to sell Uncle Tony's Garage well, merch. Where'd right? this come from? This, this, it's the official Uncle Tony's Garage merch center. Ooh. And uh, meet and greet with Lamb Chop if you're here over the course of the weekend. Shake the hand of the man that shook the hand of the man. Yeah. And, uh... You know, but also, we have a lot of fans, a lot of followers, I don't like to call them fans, right? But we have a lot of followers, like, down under, you know, Wonders. Australians. You know, I what? feel a special kinship to Australians because, as an Italian, I am also descended mostly from criminals and psychotics. Uh, that's what yeah, Australia was, wasn't that's it? That's for Australia, you know, for you guys upside down. Uh, you know, we love everything Australian, uh, except Foster's beer. I, I got sick yeah. drinking that some, I, yeah, that's bad stuff. I hear tell their toilet water runs backwards from ours too. Olivia Newton-John, right, uh, ABBA. Um, Mad Max. Mad Max, right, that, that, that crocodile guy, he took a fish through the heart. That's the way an Australian should go, right? So, but anyway, uh, so we just figured we'd, we'd pop around and take a look at some of the gases over here and, and see what's going on. And they got them. Boy, do they got them. Oh, yeah. So you've been perusing around and laying your lamb charm on some of these guesser guys and you've made some friends. Abba's not from Australia. What do you mean? But I've made friends. They have the accent. They have the Australian accent, don't they? It starts with an A. Cheer, cheers. Cheers, mate. So, but Good day. Gasser friends. You've made gasser friends. I've made some gasser friends. So the... Uh, Scott Mize is one you'll dig. He's got a yes. little Anglia. You'll love it. Ain't been touched since the 70s. And then your other... Oh, right, Mike right. Bellina. I yeah. gotta, gotta introduce you to that dude. He's a nut. All right, so let's let's go out there and let's look at some of these cars. Let's do it. All right. Make sure you get this. So the gasser thing these days is more popular than it ever was even back when gases were the thing. But they mean so many different things to so many different people. Dif different definitions of, you know, what is a gasser. But I guess if you're going to start, it should be with something like this, which is an actual, authentic, original, you know, since... 1969. 1969. 1969. Yeah. It's, and it's untouched since 1972? 71. 71. Yep. So this is Scott Mize. He's the caretaker of this amazing piece of machinery. Why don't you give everybody a tour of this thing. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Huh? So I'll give you the quick tour, maybe about five minutes, and give you, tell you what a real gasser is. 
So this is a 1950 Anglia that my dad bought in 1969 for $50. And then he built it in our garage out of basically anything that he could find. Bailing wire, duct tape, pieces off of Chevy trucks, everything. So what I want to show you is a couple really cool pieces about the car. So let's move up here to the front. So it's got a Hilburn fuel injection on it, which was originally for a 392 that he cut down to fit a 241 Hemi, a Dodge Hemi. Well, now let's, let's, let's get into this for a second now, because a lot of people have the image of a gas as having a giant engine and, right? But in actuality, most of them were very small engines, 300, 250 cubic inches, right? right? So this is, this engine here is what? 260 cubic inches. And so if, when they gas- and it's a Dodge Hemi. It's a Dodge Hemi. Because remember, they, they, there were three different versions of the early Hemi, the Chrysler, the DeSoto, and the Dodge, and the Dodge is the smallest of them all. Yeah. So this one started out as 241 cubic inches. 241, it's 260 cubic inches. And um, what, what we really found is that they ran a lot against a pound per cubic inch right. in gasser racing. And that's the difference between stock and super stock, which are horsepower per cubic inch, and gas, which was cubic, pounds, per, pounds cu per cubic inch. Right, so in the pounds so, per cubic inch, this car weighed 2150, okay. 260 cubic inches, so it had to run in about nine and a half to 10 pounds per cubic inch. So that would be about sea gas, is that sea right? Sea gas, sea gas, depending on what weight uh, that, that he would put in it to, right. to alter it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Keep going. No, that. that's okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. So the uh, dad modified this uh, Hilburn injector to fit this to give it more air uh, into the engine. It's got 12 to 1 compression ratio. It's got a, a 480 lift cam in it, a 308 degree duration uh, cam. It's a Crower cam. It's got, um, and, and basically it's all custom made by my dad in the garage. Now those injectors were originally for the Chrysler. 392. Right, and then he cut them down for, to fit a DeSoto, and then he cut them down again to fit, fit the Dodge. This yes. Right, this so. is when you couldn't just go buy stuff off the shelf. You know, there was no Summit or Jegs you could like, you know, send me this. This is back in those days, you had a piece that didn't fit, you made it fit, and then you made it fit again. Yep. And that's what that is. Yep. And so Get if you in, take a, a quick look, at, look at this right here, you can see where he cut the injector. He had to cut the line, cut the uh, butterflies, and put them all back together and made it all up. Oh, man. Now, that ignition system is something I've never seen before. Why don't you explain that one real quick? So it uh, is a very rare ignition. They only made about 100 of them. It's a Jackson Rotophase, and it's a dual coil, dual point and it runs like a four-cylinder, so it fires side to side. Yeah, you can't really see this thing. Look, I don't know if you, can you get in here and look at this real quick? It's got a four-cylinder. This is from Willis Jeep. The, yes. the cap, the, the, it's got a four-cylinder cap on this side and another four-cylinder cap on the other side, and it runs a coil off of each side. So it, it's, you got, it's got the standard like distributor base, and then there's like a, a worm drive in there that drives them off of a T. So you've got one side of each, each side of the engine has its own separate ignition system. And so for this ignition, since it runs like a four cylinder, the dwell has to be set at 62 degrees, which is like double what a V8 would be. So, um, now what kind of RPM would this thing turn? So he would run about 9,000 RPM. Now that, that, you'd leave the line at what? Uh, depends on how brave you are. <laughs> About 5,000 to 6,000 is about all you want. Because so I stuff the clutch at six grand, right? <laughs> yeah, because it goes whichever way it wants to go. So it and has a- Buzz it through the lights at- yeah, eight, oh, eight, nine, eight or 9,000 9, RPMs. 9, RPM. The thing is too, I mean, if it, what it was, if he would break a, break a motor, he just had a whole bunch of other motors and just put another motor together because that's the way it was, that's you know? That's stockpile parts. Stockpile parts. Got, he's got seven of those motors waiting in the wings. If we blow one up, you Some know? Some of us still do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The house is yeah. jammed with spares. <laughs> yeah. So, some other fine points of the car now. Again, you, we were saying this car is exactly as it was run last in 1972. Yep. And the only additions, the only modifications are what? Okay, so the only thing that's been modified is we put new fuel lines on it for safety. Okay. Uh, it's got new tires, which match the other tires because they look exactly like the ones that are on there. Okay. The rear tires are new M&Hs, but we had M&Hs on it before, so they basically okay. match. And you added uh, the... We uh, got a battery cutoff battery switch. Battery cutoff switch and the seat belts. Yeah, and it's, a, and it's got a fire extinguisher in it. Oh, Which he didn't run it with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> but you got to check out the seat belts. Yeah, though. look at what these guys used as seat belts back in the day. These are actual World War II Army surplus belts. 
1959 is what the 1959 date, was, is what the was, date is on there is 1959 that's what okay, they would so it do. wasn't world war ii surplus but it was yeah. yeah yeah and so what they would do they would go down to alabama and there was a surplus store and they could buy this they bought all the fuel lines for the hilburn injectors all of that they bought is ex-military stuff okay. and then uh, just to keep everything legal so that they can make passes with the car there's there's another there's a second set of contemporary belts hidden away yeah but <laughs> they're there so the uh, the other thing that uh, was interesting about this is dad had a lot of problems with uh, staging the car and before there was a line lock you know a line lock locks the front uh, front tires in mm -hmm. so he he drove dragsters for years and so he put made a handbrake so that he could hold it so he has his foot on the clutch his other foot on the accelerator and he can use this to drop the clutch so we've got pictures of him in the air wheelie with his hand still on the brake because it's so quick. That's awesome. <laughs> and then the uh, the back wheels are old Toronado. Yep. And it's a it's a Oldsmobile rear end. Old it's got rear. a 586 rear end in it. It's got for those purists, it's got a Zoom rear end in it, and it's got Summers Brothers axles in it. So here's the sticker from the Summers Brothers. It used to be right here, but it peeled off. And it's got a Muncie four-speed in it. Muncie four-speed rock pressure. Yep. Okay. Yep. Two twenty-first gear. Slick shifted. No or slick shift. No slick still, shift. Still got the synchronizers. Okay. In it. <laughs> That's great. And these are the original straps from the car from when it was built in 1950. We did put two batteries in it. Um, he used to run a Caterpillar dozer battery in it, which okay. is weighed 175 pounds, and he'd put that back here, get him a little more weight on the back end, so right. he. Could you know, get a little traction. <laughs> oh, Scott, that's awesome. So now you guys are going to run this car this weekend? We will. We're going to run with the Straight Axle Mafia and just make some, you know, passes, nothing crazy. Just have a good time and let him relive. He's 82 years old. Let him relive the, you know, 82 times. years old and he's still banging gears. Yep. Like a boss. Yep. All right, Scott, thank you. Thank you, you very much. Brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Scott, what is that? Well, look at the heim joints on that thing. Jeez. Those things are huge, and the ladder bars are about four foot long. That's so we can get good traction. Mm. Those are beefy, beefy monsters. It's the size of your head. As soon as I saw that, I knew I liked this guy. Tony, you gotta meet my friend Mike. This is his ride. My pleasure, sir. Let's go Mike, on, Mike. Mike Bellina, no lift, no fear, Bellina. <laughs> Mike, give our people a tour of your ride. Uh, it's 1956 Chevy. It was built in 1965. It's got the uh, motor set back 10%. It's a big block Chevy in there. 427 L88 motor. Uh, it's got fiberglass tilt nose, fiberglass doors, plexiglass windows. Plastic trunk, that's about it. Big wheelie bar, straight axle, home, everything been like this since 1965. So what upgrades have you done to this car? Upgrades? Yeah. I put a fuel cell in there because uh, it had a beer keg and NHRI says you can't do that. So we got a fuel cell and we got wheelie bars, which you can't even see them because they're tucked up underneath the bumper. Now other than that, right, this car is as it was as raced? As it was, as it was raced in 1965. That's awesome. Now, how fast have you gone with this thing? This car went 960 on the bumper at 100, almost 40 miles an hour. Now, come here, get a look at the front end of this thing. Right? So, it's like our shirt, okay? It doesn't matter how fast you go, it's how you go fast, right? Well, this is like what we're talking about. Mike, this is about the equivalent of strapping 12,000 horsepower to your porch, taking it down your driveway and trying to stay off the grass, right? That's exactly what it is, you know? <laughs> so, what's the story behind these things here? Uh, a couple wall issues. I was the car was up on the bumper, it come down real hard before I rebuilt the front end, and it spit out a shock and broke the gearbox. Couldn't steer it, so it went right to the wall twice. Once in Wisconsin, and once here in Kentucky. But you've driven it through after banging a wall or two. I, I beat a guy after I hit the wall. If we hit the wall, it's all kind of smoke in the video, and we just went right around him. You're my kind of guy. <laughs> it's got no front brakes. Spindle mounted American mags. So I bet you this thing gets them up pretty easy, huh? It goes pretty good. It'll stand it up almost on sand. So do you suppose it would stand it up with Uncle Kathy in the passenger seat? I think we could probably do something like that if they don't arrest us. I think we need to try this. <laughs>
tell you what happened next. The establishment. It was all over the place. And they squashed our good time. Mike looked for a few different areas where he could stand the thing up, but you know, they were everywhere. Every eye was on him. He's got a bit of a reputation. But we, at some point, we will stick Uncle Kathy back in that thing and shoot him down a track with sparks flying off her ass uh, before the end of this year, with any luck. And the ABBA thing, I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, especially Swedish guys. ABBA, you know, Swedish, we love, we have a lot of Swedish guys. You know, uh, meatballs, all that, we love Sweden things. So, uh, but anyway, Land Choppers, the, his car is at the chassis builder right now. Um, he's, they've got the front end on it, they've got the axle in there and all of that. Uh, make sure in the comments you let him know how he either has to have a four speed in that thing or a blower on top of it or both, right? Don't let him off the hook. Keep the pressure on Lamb Chop. Alright, so that's it. See you tomorrow.